Hi, I am Meet. So today I will be telling a very short and sweet application which we will be using IBM Cloud Service. So the name of the application is Language Translator. So as the name suggests Language Translator, it translates any text from a particular language to other language. So here we will be using the cloud services of IBM. So let's see the workflow of it. So we will be creating a web application where we will be displaying the text area where the user will type the text or a paragraph in a particular language which he needs to get translated to. Then we will send the collected data from the web application to the IBM cloud service. The IBM cloud service is, speci is specifically the IBM language translator service. So we will be using the language translator service of the IBM cloud service and then the translated text is sent from the cloud service to our application in form of JSON that is JavaScript object notation which we need to convert into plain text. So that is done in the UI itself and then the translated text will be displayed in the UI. So let us see at a demo or working of this application. It would make more clear. So here I have this application. So over here, uh, which language would you choose to type? Select the language. We are having four or five languages. So I'll be selecting English. I would be typing my sentences in English. And I would like to translate the English sentence to German. And then over here, I'll simply paste. I've copied few text from this, uh, from my notebook. So I'll be just copying it and just pasting it. And then when I hit translate button, it will take some time and translate the entire English text to German. So here we see we have the German text. Now we can translate not only to German, but we can translate it to any text. Let's say we want to translate it to Korean. So when I hit translate, this translates to Korean language. There are few things which Korean languages couldn't detect. Korean language or Korean dictionary is very complicated, but this did a very good job in predicting almost every line. Let's translate it to Arabic. And when we can see that Arabic language is there. So in this way, we can integrate this language translator tool inside many web pages and we can uh, make use of this small tool inside many websites which requires translation. So instead of downloading the Google extension uh, named as Google Translate, we can provide a translate option and give a list of the languages as shown English, Arabic and this and then hit when the user hits translate button, the language gets the web page automatically gets translated to the required or the desired language which the user needs. So this is a very short and sweet application using IBM Cloud Services. Hello, I am Meet. So now we will be starting our uh, language translator tool by setting up our IBM services. So for that, uh, we need to go to cloud.ibm.com and once we hit this URL, we'll be redirected to this page. So if you're already having an IBM cloud account, just type in your email, just type in your email ID and then continue and then enter your password. It's very simple to log in into IBM cloud. But if you're not having an IBM account, you can just hit on create an account. And once you hit on create an account, just enter some email ID and then some password and then next and then verify your email. They will send you a verification link on your register uh, on the email ID on which you have provided here. Once you verify that email, they'll ask some personal information and then hit create account. As you can see over here, develop for free, no credit card is required. So that means it is completely free. You will be having uh, complete access to all the services of IBM cloud for one month in free. But after then, if you want to use these services, you have to pay for them. But for now, this is uh, all about registration and signing up. So once we are done with this, uh, the interface would look something like this. After we you have logged in into it, 
the interface will look something like this. So now in order to set up the language translator, we need to go to catalog. After going to catalog, we have to select AI and machine learning. After selecting AI and machine learning, just go for language translator service. for language translator service and once uh, as i have as i have already enrolled for this service it is showing me an uh, warning here that i have already enrolled i have already selected this service so i have i can choose on view existing so it will show my existing service but if you are uh, new to this then simply hit create it will redirect you to this page as shown it will redirect to the same page yeah, so we will be getting a page like this where we will be having a API key and URL. So we need to copy this API key and then paste it over here. This this variable inside API key and then we have to copy this URL and paste it over here. For every user API key and URL will be different. So kindly follow this procedure as mentioned here. Hi. So in the last video, we saw how we have to set up our IBM Watson cloud service for the language translator service. So we ended up at this page and we ended up by copying the API key and the URL and then assigning them to these variables named as API key and URL. So uh, this is just a start. So before using the services, we have to install some the dependencies. So in Jupyter Notebook, we just use uh, exclamation mark and then type in the command of the package which we want to install. So we will be installing the IBM Watson package. So we just hit pip install IBM Watson. As I've already installed it, it will uh, show me successfully installed. If I run this, it will take some time to install all the dependencies and as i have already installed it so it just shows it just shows requirement already satisfied then as we have indicated as we have uh, assigned the api key and the url to their variables let's just see what the what the overall flow will be okay so what actually is happening in the background is we are over here at our local machine and there is this cloud of ibm which is consisting of many systems which are together related right there are many systems which are performing some kind of actions. So now we want to make a request from our system of the language translator to some XYZ system in the cloud. So for getting it, we use the medium of URL. Okay. So that is why this URL thing was required. HTTPS language translator dot Watson dot cloud dot IBM instances. So that is the reason why this URL is required. It is in order to establish a connection from your local system to a particular system in the IBM cloud. Okay. And then uh, the API key is like a password to this. So basically uh, we have to, we have to say this machine like, Hey, we are authorized users. We have an authentication key, which is named as the API key. This key, this API key is actually an authentication key, which gives you uh, which says this machine that the user is a registered user of IBM cloud service. And when you uh, send the API key with this, then this machine accepts the request of the URL and then reloads and refreshes the language translator object inside it. So this was a small introduction about the working of the uh, IBM cloud service. So now first we set up, first we set it up our API key and URL. Then we install our dependencies. Then we installed our dependencies that is pip install IBM Watson. After that, we import few of the libraries from IBM Watson import language translator v3. v3 is nothing but version 3. And then from IBM cloud underscore SDK. SDK is nothing but software development kit core dot authenticators import IAM authenticator. As I mentioned that we need some kind of authentication key such that this machine, which is an IBM cloud allows our request. So that is why we have the API key and URL and for validating this API key and URL, we need to import these, we need to import this IAM authenticator. 
so once we have the authenticator we have all our dependencies and uh, services and packages imported we will set up our objects so iam authenticator is a class which takes up the api key as in parameter and we save that object and we save this instance of a class in inside an object named as authenticator now we will set up our language translator object so language translator is equals to language translator v3 that is version 3 and we have to specify which version of the language translator we are using so the current version and the updated version is 2018-0501 and then we have to pass the authenticator object so as i already mentioned previously that over here as we are sending the url request this machine over here will try to authenticate it so the authentication thing is done with the help of this language translator service okay after that we just set up our service that language translator dot set service url if this code executes successfully i have i have not installed the dependency here if this code executes successfully that means the language translator service is now set so we are now all set with our services just we need to ensure that we uh, pass in the correct parameters and correct text so now we move forward for the translate service so here there, this table is all about uh, all the various kind of languages and the language code available so one can easily uh, go through this table uh, this notebook will be posted in the code so now uh, there is an there is a method known as translate in the language translator v3 class and as we have in, in, initiated the language translator object of the language translator v3 class we will be using this object now for uh, for using all the methods which are present in this class so over here lang translator dot translate there is a method named as translate inside the language translator class and we will be sending our text here and then model id is nothing but enhi en is the code for english and hi is the code for hindi so we need to translate from english language to hindi language so now if i hit enter shift enter this will show us uh, this gets executed now there is a method known as get result and then when i hit and en shift enter i see a json formatted string here which says translation hello world in hindi the word count and the character count now let's try this for a bigger text so this is the text which i have chosen and this is the uh, same method which we are invoking as we have done over here so now when i hit this this shows me everything now this is in a json format but we are already we are interested only in this part so how do we extract it so we say uh, translation dot get result or translation dot get result of translations as this is a dictionary we will be accessing this dictionary with the help of this translations key so this translations key has a list as its value so as we are accessing the first object of the list so that is why there is the index 0 and then inside that list also we are having a dictionary and from that dictionary we are interested in the value of it so we will be accessing the value with the help of the key named as translation so in this way we will be decoding the entire json string and we will be getting our translated text so a very big text like this we have converted it easily to hindi text using a simple language translator tool using the ibm language translator service so this is a very simple and a short way of uh, making a language translator tool not only just english to hindi we can select any language we want here are the list of languages one can feel free to use any language this will work for any language which are mentioned in the table here hi so in the last video we made our language translation model using the ibm cloud service where we saw how our language translation model is working 
but in order to make it generalized and in order to make it uh, user friendly we will be making a web application out of it so for making a web application i am using a package in python which is named as streamlit now streamlit is a very famous package for data science as many of the data scientists and machine learning engineers use this package in order to make simple deployable web applications so we'll be using the same application uh, a language translator model but we will integrate it with the streamlit code let's see how it goes so we will import uh, all the dependencies like import streamlit as st numpy uh, just for numerical uh, numerical calculations and all now uh, the lines from 4 to 18 whichever are there they are similar to the ones which i discussed in the last video uh, they are almost similar so if you want uh, to check it out you can just keep side by side the Jupyter notebook and the uh, running code so you will observe that lines from 4 to 18 are same so this is just setting up our cloud service as I have discussed in the last video in detail so uh, all this uh, is just a simple import statement and then we'll set up we'll set up the API key and URL and then we'll authenticate our uh, uh, API key and then we'll in instantiate the a language translator object and then we will set the service on now on line number 20 we set the title of our project to be streamlit.title language translator so before going forward let's see how this application how to run this application so I'll say one thing if uh, you don't have streamlit installed in your systems you just write the, in the command pip install streamlit and this should uh, work fine oh, there's a typo streamlit and this should work fine as I already have the streamlit application that's why it's showing me requirement already satisfied but in case of uh, not installed then it will take some time to install because it is a little bit big package so now uh, as I already have the streamlit installed I will show you how to run a streamlit app so for that you have to just type in streamlit run app dot pi and this will launch the server as in flask uh, how it's launching here also we launch the same so this is how a very uh, good application uh, very good uh, decorated web application streamlet is so you can just inspect and also you can check the responsiveness of this thing it is as responsive as uh, it should be so a very good application in short indeed a simple and sweet responsive application so if you want to toggle the dark mode also you can do it just go to settings and you can edit active theme and then you can edit the theme as per your thing you can make it in a dark mode and uh, you can also make it in light mode so this is a very user friendly web application streamlit provides a very good service for making web applications good so uh, as per as on the line number 20 we set the language translator title and it's visible here the language translator title then we move down and here we are setting the drop down list of the languages so here as we are seeing this drop down this drop down which is having english arabic hindi german spanish and korean so this drop down is all about this so basically uh, uh, this is displaying which language do you want uh, which language would you choose to type so this is what it is which language would you choose to type and then this list uh, then the list of options we are passing it in form of tuples so uh, whatever the user selects the option the whatever the user has selected it gets stored into this option variable let's say i have selected hindi so it gets stored into hin option then the same thing uh, another select box uh, which language would you like to translate to so in the first select box we say in which language do you want to type the text in and then we say that which language do you want to translate the text in so here we are maintaining uh, some six to five five to six languages but you can go uh, even more than that as i have shown the table in the jupyter notebook uh, previously that this is a big table and you can include all the languages if you want they are like almost 30 to 40 languages mentioned in this table and you can you know create a a uh, very large application on scale okay so uh, lines so code li from line number 24 to line number 30 is almost similar and then in order to you know kind of uh, display the message 
uh, I say that the enter the text in form in the option so option is this so I have uh, let's say that I have selected English so enter the text in English language in the text area provided below so here I am maintaining a text area where I will be writing my text which I need to translate so this English is dynamically uh, popped let's say that if it was Arabic then here we get Arabic if it was let's say German then here we get German okay so I want to type my language in English that is why I mentioned that then comes the main logic of the whole streamlit application that is this dictionary over here so as we all know as I discussed that in this the user will select any one language and over here also the user will select any one language and for each and every language there is one particular language code so in data structures we come across a very famous data structure known as dictionary which uh, has a capability to store data in form of keys and values so here uh, unknowingly um, knowingly uh, the keys are obviously the languages and the values are their code and we saw in the application that the main part of the entire application is all about the model ID so in the model ID if we go and see in the Jupyter notebook over here the model ID was E and HI right so E and represents the language of English and HI represents the language of Hindi so uh, we need to make a kind of key value mapping to it so that you know we can make it on a large scale so this is all about this language library which is a dictionary of languages and their keywords as mentioned in the table you can mention many languages as per your requirement here is Arabic AR as we can see that Arabic is mapped to AR English is to EN Hindi is to HI Spanish is to ES German is to DE Korean is to KO so once all that is done and then we are setting up our text area with a height of 250 and then we are just creating a button named as translate button over here so the translate button is over here if we hover on this and uh, if we write something uh, that gets translated but here just a little bit of uh, checks we have to do before doing anything so we'll be using a try accept mechanism so basically try accept mechanism is all about object oriented programming so we will be trying our code if we get any kind of exceptions at runtime then the accept block will be executed so what we are trying so we are trying the first thing is we'll see if uh, the option and option one are same that is if user selects the language to be typed is English and the language to translate also is English so it doesn't make any sense right so we have to kind of uh, you know uncheck this or we have to kind of be smart in handling this kind of situations so that is one edge case so uh, when anyone does it then we will give the mo utmost priority to it and uh, let's see what happens if we do it and then when I hit translate then it says that please select different language for translation as displayed over here because option and option one are same so that is one handling the other thing is uh, if option and option one are not same if option and option one are not same that means if this is Arabic and when I hit translate here I find that uh, there is no text area given here so what is the warning which is coming up please do cross check if the text area is filled with sentences or not so it doesn't execute this else block in fact uh, it executes it enters this as else block and then uh, suddenly when any anything want, when there is no text in the text area it raises an exception so when an exception is raised the except block will be activated and then the statement please do cross check if the text area is filled with sentences or not has been popped up as we can see here so this is an indication that there is no content in the text area please do fill in the content so if there is content in the text area uh, the result would be different so let's say that I'll fill this I'll fill this text and then when I hit translate this will show me the translated text into Arabic now it will take some time 
and it will showcase the result here we go so we have the translated text in arabic so i have just kept the language as in english and then the translated text is to arabic so here we uh, didn't find any kind of exception everything was perfect so uh, how to start about this so here as i said that over here uh, in the notebook the important part was about the model id so uh, model id to generate the model id the i have said that language lib of option that means if option is selected to be english let's say that option selected to be is english so here english the code for english is en and translated is nothing but ar okay so option 1 is arabic and option is english so for english language lib of english what is language lib of english en what is language lib of arabic ar so en is to ar so this is basically a kind of this is basically something like this en which is nothing but language lib of option plus this er ar sorry which is the language code for arabic so this is the same thing which we wanted right the language codes and that we will be passing into the model id that is it so if we want to add more languages we just need to update this and update this that is it so that makes it a dynamic website right if you want to push something if you want to add few la more languages you just need to update the tuples here and the dictionary here that's it other things remain the same there's no change so the translated code is then passed into the model id and then uh, we just hit on translation dot get result which uh, gives the result in form of json which we saw it in the last uh, jupyter notebook that we get the form in the form we get the result in the form of a json text and then we have to decode this json text into a uh, normal text so for that we just do this kind of manipulation and then once we get our answer we say that translated text in option 1 so option 1 is basically the language in which one we want to get the text translated to so the translated as we can see in the demo as well it is shown that the translated text in arabic languages so the option 1 is arabic right and the text which is translated in arabic language is shown below so and then we say that sd dot markdown markdown is nothing but a kind of uh, attribute which is used to uh, you know kind of set style statements so this markdown we will uh, mostly find in uh, many of the jupyter notebook commands and even readme readme files and everything it's just a, a way of writing some kind of sentences in a bold manner <laughs> nothing more than that and then st dot write ans that's it we write our answer uh, that is this translated text over here as we can see st dot write answer and then uh, we just close this so this was all about the else part and if there is any exception which is only and there, if there is any exception which is occurring during the execution of this the except block gets executed and then the the sentence is written so just see how simple the code is uh, there's nothing much to it we just need to write some manual functions of streamlet which are very easy which can be easily written and which can be easily understood by any layman as well so that's it for this one i hope you liked it hi so in the previous video we saw how to integrate our ibm services uh, language translator with the web ui we saw how we coded the streamlit app so now uh, the code is pretty good and uh, short and simple now we want to deploy this into production so for deploying into production we will be using the uh, heroku cloud platform and uh, in order to deploy it we require in addition two more files uh, three more files sorry uh, one is the proc file one is the requirements.txt file and one is the setup.shell script so the setup uh, shell script is required in order to uh, kind of say the heroku server that hey this app is a streamlit app and uh, these are all the ports and cores so please make sure that you inst you embed them in your service 
So the setup dot shell script is mainly required for Streamlit apps. So uh, please make a note that you have to if you don't write this uh, setup dot shell script then Streamlit apps would not work. Then we have the requirements txt which is a uh, normal in case of Heroku. We have to uh, mention all the requirements. And then we have the proc file. For proc file we say that uh, we say our Heroku server that you know you can you just take these two files and uh, uh, this is all about your integrating service and then start running this apps. So this is nothing but the web sh setup dot sh sh is the indication of shell script so just uh, so it's kind of saying that hey web service uh, there is a shell script file which is named as setup dot shell script setup dot shell please go to that file and complete all the require and uh, do and uh, operate all the commands which are written here once all the commands are written then you execute the streamlit run app dot pi so this is the name that is run app.py as we were writing here uh, in the previous video streamlit run app.py in the similar manner we have to say or we have to provide the command for Heroku service uh, that hey if you run if you uh, say streamlit run dot run app.py uh, that would start the service of the application okay so these are few requirements dot uh, txt this is the setup dot hsh uh, file that that is a proc file and now uh, in order to establish the connection with heroku uh, first just type in heroku here uh, first just type in heroku here if you don't have heroku on your system i'll just say what are all the things we have to do okay so as i already have heroku in my system uh, i would say you so if you don't have if you have already an Heroku account just log in to your email address and password and just simply hit login if you don't have an Heroku account just go for sign up and then uh, uh, fill in all the necessary details which Heroku service is asking you like first name last name company name email address and all and then just hit create free account so once your account is created uh, you must log in so after logging in the ui would look something like this over here so you can create a app over here by using this create new app so as i've already created a multi lang translator app uh, which is the same thing make sure that you use unique names because uh, heroku service uh, discards all duplicate names or so doesn't allow you to take up a name which is already taken so that is a little bit problem in Heroku service. So when you hit on click uh, multi lang translator, just go to deploy section and in deploy section we will be having this uh, commands which we have to uh, you know include in our this thing. So uh, this is the command line interface of Heroku uh, that is use uh, Heroku CLI. If you are uh, pushing your repositories onto GitHub then it is uh, well and good you need to connect to your github and then uh, it automatically branches your github repositories here and there is another one that is container registry this also is used uh, by heroku cli only so if you don't have heroku uh, command line interface then simply hit on here and just download the heroku command line interface uh, i personally use command line interface for streamlit apps and uh, I personally use command line interface for streamlit apps and for flask apps I use uh, uh, you know github service so I'll simply copy all the commands which are there and then simply just step by step I'll just do it and then they say enter a key just press any key except Q and then they will open and uh, you have to just simply click on login so you will be logged in then uh, once you're logged in, uh, once you're logged in, then we have to start our things. So, don't copy the CD my project. It's just for folder initiation. Uh, get in it. It will initialize an empty repository, and uh, then then just simply say Heroku Git Remote Multi Lang Translator.
pardon for it copy paste then hit enter so this will uh, kind of create and get repository here and then just simply write this command get add dot and uh, as it has already initialized this I'm running again and again the same code so this would be a better command here it better so yeah so as I changed one file and there were two insertions into it and one deletion into it so that is what is detected by these people and then when I say git Heroku git push Heroku master so this will push my master branch as you can see this is a master branch here so this will push the master branch now um, this is kind of getting um, pushing my uh, code on the Heroku cloud service so yeah so for flask apps uh, you know kind of just push your code onto your github repositories and then um, kind uh, simply uh, just hit on connect with github and then uh, connect to github and then you will be having your uh, so if I just do this connect to github and then uh, it will ask me to connect to github and then you connect uh, to github by providing your username and password and then the things will work automatically after then you have to just provide the repository name and the branch on which you have uh, you want to deploy your git repo so yeah the same thing so it's uh, working and I think so within two minutes this will be deployed so it's compressing and uh, um, streamlit apps are really good in uh, order to you know kind of make the workflow very simple for of a data science project uh, the UI user interface is very simple and then it uh, there's no required to code the HTML as we do it in flask and all it's just simple English language and the web UI gets created within no time so streamlit is very pop is gaining popularity uh, nowadays in data science community so this one uh, you can also deploy your streamlit apps on streamlit sharing so as you can see that the version 3 of the project has been released on Heroku so this is the one yep so this is deployed and then I just uh, click on control link so yep here we have our language translator app which is deployed on Haraku so uh, uh, we'll so we'll check whether this is working. Uh, we'll say that history of India and pick up some random text. <laughs> Let's say that we pick up some random text and then hit over. Uh oh, hit over here, and then when we hit translate it's running and um, it should work so yep we get the hindi text here um if we translate it to german let's see what happens um 
this works fine it tra it gets translated to german as well you can try out with uh, various other languages over here which i mentioned and also you can uh, try to integrate your own languages uh, which uh, i have uh, shown in the table and i have shown the method also how to integrate it you can also change the ui of this by going to you know kind of settings and then uh, theme you can change it to dark theme you can change it to you can use your system setting you can use light theme or anything it's up to you okay so this is a very flexible web application which is deployed on uh, uh, heroku cloud platform and and this is how simply we can integrate the services of ibm and uh, deploy our project end to end on heroku service as well